what he's saying, but are you saying that I, I don't expect to reach that threshold? I mean, Kansas, I've sold to a few people in Arkansas, and all of a sudden our Kansas like my product. Do I, and the, you know, part I sold before I reached that threshold, in my, do I have to pay taxes that I never collected? I mean, is it retroactive to the day I sold the first one in Arkansas that year, or does it start the day I hit that threshold and I said, oh, I need to register? And a, a component of the, uh, the Wayfair decision was like, we're not have any type of retroactivity built into the law. So a, a taxpayer did not have nexus with the state of Arkansas, but then eventually obtained sufficient nexus to be required to collect our sales tax. That's, that's the whole nature of not having a retroactive law is that once they have a sufficient access, that's when they need to make the uh, application to us to have a sales and use tax permit. Okay. So Mr. Chair, I have a question of you, please. Okay. Are we going to, before we get done, I know we're sending a report, but are we going to actually try to draw this bill to hammer out? Yep. So that will be the task between September and the end of the year is to take our report out and translate it into legislation. And yeah, there's a lot of work involved in that. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. And, and I think when we really look at 30 new house members, I think we need to figure some way to educate those members that want to go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. President, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was listening to the news last night or this morning. They were uh, specifically talking about a furniture store that has traditionally been an online store. But now they say the trend is these online uh, businesses are starting to establish physical presence in the state, such as the showroom. So I'm just curious, are you tracking that to see if that's a maneuver on their part to try to, you know, anticipate laws such as this where they would be able to skirt around uh, some of the things we're trying to enact by saying we do have a physical presence? Or are you guys on top of that, or what are you seeing? Representative Hammer, um, as a August 1st, um, our sales and use tax section has developed functionality within their registration process to ask new registrants if they have a physical presence in the state of Arkansas, as well as um, are they registering solely as a result of the Wayfair decision. So we are, we are tracking that on our new account registrations, but we are not asking that same information of our 75,000 plus sales tax accounts that we already have. We're not asking them to make a, a, a new certification. So we are certainly tracking the new accounts and we'd be happy to provide uh, at the next meeting the number of new registrations that we have uh, received and the answers for those new registrations on whether or not they have a physical presence. So we're certainly getting that information now on our new accounts. Follow up, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, so, does the does the reference to physical presence, as referenced under Proposal B, rise to the occasion that 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 could be the requirement that once one of those online stores actually puts a physical presence, that that could be the connector to where they have to connect at that point of presence on all sales taxes done, whether it's in that physical location or whether it's through their internet sales because they have established a physical presence in the state. Yes, and certainly what we have right now in our law is that if you do have, if you are transacting or engaging business in the state of Arkansas where you are delivering that product to your customer in Arkansas and you have some type of, of store or warehouse distribution center um, within our state that you are already subject to our, our law and are required to collect and remit sales tax on your sales to Arkansas customers. Now there certainly could be built in, we discussed in our last meeting, additional reporting requirements of sales tax account holders for them to isolate on their return the uh, percentage or the amount of their sales that are derived solely from online sales to Arkansas residents versus their traditional sales from brick and mortar stores. But as we discussed in that last meeting, there we only want to collect from our sales tax account holders the amount of information necessary to, to complete the return. If the General Assembly would like to make that a requirement of the sales tax report, we can incorporate that change on the return. 
Um, but as it sits right now, that's not the type of information that we require our sales tax account holders to provide on their monthly report. All right, thank you. Thank you, sure. Okay, that's all we have.